My name is Dr. James Roberts. I describe myself as a practitioner of integrative cardiology. I learned about Cavidex one year ago and began to use Cavidex in my patients with advanced and recurrent coronary disease, persistent symptoms. I've been delighted with the results. Subsequently, I've treated up to 150 of my patients with Cavidex. I find Cavidex to be incredibly safe, incredibly effective, quite cost effective, and with a rapid onset of benefit. Cavidex is now the most important anti-arthrosclerotic therapy in my armamentarium. The knowledge that I've accumulated about cyclodextrin and Cavidex from my review of the literature, as well as patient outcomes, is available on my website, which is heartfixer.com. And as we get more clinical outcomes, I will add them to the website. So if you want more information, you can look at my website. And of course, you can look at the cavidexusa.com website, which has a great deal of additional information. I trained at the University of Cincinnati in internal medicine and in cardiology, and I've been in practice for roughly 40 years. Early in my career, I practiced invasive cardiology as I was taught. I was dealing with crises, putting out fires, doing lots of invasive procedures, and because we weren't dealing with the causes of arterial disease, the patients were coming back with more crises. So we're doing invasive procedures on the same patients over and over again, of course getting paid each time, but that's not the best way to practice medicine. If you need an invasive procedure, you need an invasive procedure, but you should only need one. And that is possible if we deal with all the causes of arterial disease. And that is what I've been focusing on over the last 20 years of my career. We do our best to deal with risk factors, the causes of arterial disease, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, high homocysteine. There's a long list of acquired and genomic phenomena that play a role in this disease. We wish to identify, neutralize, or resolve all these risk factors. If we're successful, the arteries do not worsen. Often we're not successful. We cannot control the risk factors. You cannot tolerate our medications. Thus, the disease progresses. Now that we have Cavidex, we can directly remove the plaque, and this will make up for any failings we have or deficiencies in our risk factor reduction program. We talk about statin drugs and other methodologies to block the generation of cholesterol in the liver. That does not directly remove atherosclerotic plaque from the arteries. It just decreases the likelihood the plaque will worsen. With Cavidex, we're not blocking the generation of cholesterol in the liver. We're pulling cholesterol out of the artery wall. We're directly reversing the arterial disease. No matter what the cause of your arterial disease, be it high blood pressure, high cholesterol, homocysteine, high sugar, Cavidex is a universal antidote. How does this work? Cavidex has a cone-like structure. The outside is water-soluble, so Cavidex can, can enter the bloodstream. The, the inner core is, is fat-soluble. Into this cavity will fit a molecule of cholesterol. So you can take Cavidex intravenously or via the rectal delivery system. You can't take Cavidex orally because it would be digested by the stomach acid. It would not get into the circulation. When we take Cavidex, it, it will abut against a cell membrane of, a, of a, a, a cell in the arterial circulation. It'll basically pluck a cholesterol molecule out of the cell membrane. The cholesterol in the cell membrane is diffusing in and out, but it doesn't leave the cell readily, but with Cavidex nearby, it'll pluck it out. If we take cholesterol out of the cell membrane, we must then mobilize intracellular cholesterol from cholesterol stores to replace the cholesterol in the cell membrane. Thus, lipid droplets within the artery wall begin to dissolve. Activated foam cells, activated endothelial or smooth muscle cells or macrophages within the atherosclerotic plaque will actually take up the Cavidex, and in these cells, Cavidex will, will begin to dissolve crystalline cholesterol. Crystalline cholesterol is particularly problematic in that it gives rise to a great deal of oxidative inflammatory stress. Crystalline cholesterol leads to plaque destabilization. Cavidex will dissolve not just the lipid droplets, but the crystalline cholesterol. When the crystalline cholesterol is being dissolved, 
you create a class of molecules called oxysterols. Mother Nature does not like to see these oxysterols in the cells of the artery wall, and thus we begin to generate cholesterol extrusion pumps. They have a, an alphabet soup of names, ABCA1 and ABCG1. These are, are enzymes that actually pump cholesterol out of the artery wall. So we're dissolving crystalline cholesterol, we're dissolving uh, lipid droplets, and we're initiating the pumping of lipids out of the artery wall. The cholesterol that's diffusing out or it's being pumped out will then be bound up by the HDL, which takes it out through the liver. So we're rapidly stimulating reverse cholesterol transport. So irrespective of what caused the plaque to build up, we are pulling cholesterol out of the artery wall. The process through which we do this also turns off inflammation, it turns off oxidative stress. Endothelial function, the ability of the artery wall to generate nitric oxide is, is, is key to provide the Teflon coating to uh, pr protect against plaque activation, plaque deposition. Um, when we, we remove lipids from the artery wall with Cavidex, we turn on the enzyme nitric oxide synthase so we're making nitric oxide. Our patients get better in two weeks with Cavidex. Now, you're not going to be dramatically opening up a 90% narrowing to an 80% narrowing in two weeks, but you are going to more or less instantly be lowering inflammation, lowering oxidative stress, generating nitric oxide, and improving blood flow. So there's a rapid onset of biochemical benefit and a slow but steady reduction in plaque volume. Thus, we treat our patients for several months until they improve, and then we will treat them with some form of maintenance program to help maintain the gain and to help keep pulling lipids out of the artery wall. So I typically treat patients who are having symptoms for three months, their symptoms get better, then we come up with a, um, a maintenance program. In patients who are asymptomatic, they do not have flow restrictive narrowings, but we want to get ahead of the game. We don't want to wait for that 60% narrowing become a 90% narrowing. We're also treating patients with Cavidex for one to two months and then some form of maintenance program. How do we measure efficacy? Well, if you're having angina and you get better, that's obviously, you're, you're getting better. We look at how far you can walk, how many nitros you need. We can do carotid artery intermediate thickness assessments. Here we, we are measuring the thickness of the artery wall and that is an indicator of your current propensity to form plaque, and we can see plaque in the carotid bulbs. And in several patients with two to four months of Cavidex, I'm seeing a visible decrease in plaque volume. So we, we know from the animal studies that plaque is being dissolved. We see in our patients that their symptoms are getting better, and we're seeing slow but still significant um, improvements in carotid bulb plaque. Thus, Cavidex is, is universally effective and we cannot hurt you. Now, not only is Cavidex going to help improve coronary artery blood flow, it's going to improve lower extremity blood flow if you have blockages in your legs. It's going to improve blood flow to your brain. When you have a stroke, there's an explosion of cells in the area that was impaired and a lot of cholesterol is released. White cells will go in and gobble it up. They become foam cells. This is the same physiology as in an activated plaque. This leads to inflammation and brain fog. So this patient had lower extremity vascular disease, a recent stroke, we put her on Cavidex, the brain fog clears because we're scarfing up the lipids, blood flow to her lower extremities improve because Cavidex is opening up arteries making nitric oxide. She's walking farther, she's feeling better, and her brain fog resolved. When we have symptoms of vascular disease and we do angiograms and we say you have a blockage in one or more cornea arteries, you have a blockage in your carotid artery, you might have a blockage in your leg, and then our conventional approach would be to do bypass surgery or stents on each lesion we call them. When we see a blockage we call it a lesion. So we could be putting stents all throughout your body operating on you over and over again. Well with Cavidex you're treating every blockage all at once. You're treating your systemic circulation. Any atherosclerotic plaque in the body is going to be favorably affected. So this is sort of a universal antidote to atherosclerosis. And the best thing about Cavidex is it's over the counter. You don't need 
to be dependent upon a physician. You can just do this because it's a good idea, which I think is fantastic. That doesn't mean you should stop working with your physicians because we all have work that we need to do, but Cavidex will sort of free you of dependency on repetitive invasive procedures, which is where you don't want to go. If you're having a crisis, you need a stent. Of course you do, but you never want to have another crisis. You want to do great risk factor reduction, and Cavidex is going to be helpful as a universal antidote. Cavidex is incredibly safe. You can't hurt anybody with Cavidex. Cavidex is FDA approved. I've received 50 IV Cavidex treatments. Didn't bother me a bit. Our patients are not receiving IV Cavidex because it's not as practical as taking the daily rectal Cavidex. Cavidex is the trade name for cyclodextrin. Cyclodextrin is FDA approved. It is used as a drug delivery vehicle. So we have in the, the outside of the cone is water soluble, the inside is fat soluble. Drug manufacturers will mix cyclodextrin with the drug and then the cyclodextrin brings it into the body. We're not bringing anything into the body, we're taking something out and that is cholesterol. We're taking it out through the liver because Cavidex will pluck the cholesterol out of the vascular wall, hand it off to an HGL, take it out into the liver, some goes out through the kidneys into the urine. Cavidex was first given intravenously in 1992 and it was demonstrated to remove lipids from humans and then the idea kind of got D didn't have any traction. No one followed up on that until Cavidex be, be, was put into use to deal, deal with Neiman Pick disease. Neiman Pick is a fortunately rare genomic disorder where you lack an enzyme called Neiman Pick protein that transfers cholesterol from one cell compartment to another. Cholesterol gets stuck in your cells and you die um, in your early teens of lipid overload brain lipid overload, liver and spleen, and it's fatal because you can't get the cholesterol out. So they started treating these kids with Neiman Pick with cyclodextrin. You, they were taking it subcutaneously or IV or into the spinal fluid, intrathecal, to get the cholesterol out of their brains and they survived. So we showed, they, they showed in kids that cyclodextrin was safe and effective removing lipids. Well, if it takes lipids out in Neiman Pick disease, why shouldn't it take lipids out in standard atherosclerosis? Thus, Dr. Zimmer, a German researcher several years ago, published a paper showing how cyclodextrin would reverse atherosclerosis in animals that were genetically predisposed to atherosclerosis. A patient, a physicist, um, brought me that paper several years ago, and it was fascinating but there was no clinically available form of cyclodextrin. A year ago, a patient who lives in California came to see me and he goes, by the way, have you heard about Cavidex? Huh? What's Cavidex? You got to learn about this. So I went online. Oh, it's cyclodextrin. So the, the Cavidex group in Australia had found a way to make Cavidex available in their their rectal delivery system or IV and thus we begin to use in our patients with fantastic results. So I'm all in for Cavidex. I can't see a reason for someone not to take Cavidex if atherosclerosis is present. The only question is how long do you need to take it? What is the best maintenance program? Right now we don't know but we will be learning over time and as more physicians get involved we'll have a greater understanding of the best approach to use this wonderful molecule.